Welcome to my channel. I want to talk about uh, a documentary that I watched last night that was, to me, incredible, talking about the Exodus. But before I do that, I have to thank each and every one of you that comes to my channel and watches my videos. Thank you for watching them, thank you for liking them, thank you for commenting on them, and thank you for sharing them. And thank you most of all to everyone that has subscribed to my channel. I, I continue to say I'm blown away. I seriously mean that. I'm blown away by the number of people that have subscribed and the amount of interest that it's gotten. And I just, I can't, I can't thank you enough. I really do appreciate it. So last night I was trying to catch up with comments and, um, a, a viewer that has the handle that Canadian white trash guy uh, recommended that I watch a guy called the Naked Archaeologist and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name you'll see it on the screen here in a minute but the name intrigued me so I thought well I'm gonna go check this out well I ended up sitting watching documentaries until three o'clock in the morning so Thanks a lot, that Canadian white trash guy. You got me hooked. <clears throat> this particular documentary is, uh, well, let me start it and then we'll talk about it. scenes of a very famous movie the lost ark of the covenant the box there that's his name i'm not even going to try to pronounce it <laughs> and by the way the the documentary is uh produced and filmed by james cameron uh, i'm sure you know who that is uh didn't he do avatar i mean he's I think he did Titanic. He's done a number of things, obviously very professionally and well done. ...that once held the Ten Commandments is crated and abandoned in the basement of a warehouse. What if Hollywood's depiction accurately reflects reality? This would mean that hiding somewhere there's tangible proof of the story the Bible calls the Exodus, the deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt, led by the prophet Moses. Well, right here in this building, there's a 3,500-year-old gold image carved, perhaps by an eyewitness to the biblical Exodus, of the lost Ark of the Covenant. And the people in there don't realize it. That's the first two minutes. If you want to watch this, you're going to have to watch it yourself. But I'm going to tell you, uh, this guy, Simka, I guess is his first name, is an investigative journalist. And so <clears throat> when he looked at the Exodus story, he, he looked at what archaeologists were saying and what historians were saying, and he points out something very interesting very early on in, in the documentary that um, most scholars say that the 
the Exodus story is a myth. However, if it's not a myth, it happened around 1227 BC. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see how you can put a, a exact time like that on something that happened that long ago that you also claim never happened. I mean, that that seems illogical to me, but, and, and he points that out, it seems illogical to him too. And so the way that he approached this was, he said, look, if there was an exodus, then there should be a record of it in Egypt. And then he asked some more questions. If there was Israelite slaves in Egypt, there should be a record of that. And if the Israelites traveled to or, or migrated to Egypt 200 years before the Exodus, there should be a record of that. And so he actually goes to Egypt and he looks for these records. And the interesting thing is he doesn't, he doesn't follow the normal path that scholars follow. He follows the path that an investigative journalist would follow and he asks the questions. So he goes to Egypt, he talks to some Egyptologists and he says, are there any records in the, in the uh, Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics that you have that talk about a plague, a, a series of events that were very disastrous and that occurred? And sure enough, there is. And they happened in about 1500 BC. And so then he says, well, okay, if that, would, if that would be the plagues that are mentioned in the Bible, then are there any records of, in Egyptian hieroglyphics that talk about them chasing the uh, Egyptians across the desert? And he asks Egyptologists, and they say, yes, there are. And then he says, well, if the Bible says that they came to Egypt 200 years before that, are there any records of that? And the Egyptologists say yes. And he goes to the tomb of the Pharaoh that was involved at the time and shows you the hieroglyphics where they show the Israelites coming into Egypt. And then he says... If there was a man named Jacob who was um, responsible for, you know, had high responsibility in Egypt, there should be a record of that. Do you have such a record? And the Egyptologists say, yes. And so throughout this video, throughout this documentary, he shows you concrete, non-biblical evidence that the Israelites went to Egypt in about 1700 BC, that Jacob was a man of great responsibility in Egypt at one time, that the Israelites did become slaves to the Egyptians. He actually finds the city where they lived. And all this is being excavated by archaeologists, but their interpretation of it is wacko. It's completely not in line with the evidence that we have. But I think it's because the archeologists don't want to admit the Bible is true, and so they find other explanations for it. But I mean, if you just sit and watch this thing, you'll be going, well, why isn't this common knowledge? Why aren't scholars agreeing with this? And as it turns out, there actually are some scholars who are starting to come around and say, you know what? Uh, we think the Exodus probably happened in 1500, not 1227, in about 1500. And every step of the way, every single step of the way, he finds evidence that supports the story in the Bible. For example, there is a volcano on an island in the Mediterranean called Santorini Island that erupted around 1500 BC and uh, scholars disagree on exactly what the date is when it erupted but uh, there's general agreement that it was one of the top four most uh, 
uh, what's the word, powerful uh, eruptions to ever have happened on the earth. I'm sure most of you have probably heard of Krakatoa. Well, Santorini's up there with Krakatoa. Uh, he describes how high the, the cloud was, how wide it was, the, the ash cloud. And I mean, it was huge. And actually, um, the island of Santorini is now several islands because uh, the, the mouth of the volcano collapsed and it's covered in water now. And so, and he walks you through all 10 of the plagues that are mentioned in the Bible and shows you how every single one of those can be explained by the volcanic eruption on Santorini, the earthquakes and tidal waves that were a result of that eruption, and the things like the darkening of the sky because it was covered in ash, and and the scientists have found evidence of this. They found um, they found lava in the excavation uh, that they did in the the. I can't remember the name of the city, but the city where the Israelite slaves were living. They found volcanic ash in the Nile. And they know that it's from the Santorini volcano because they can look at the chemical makeup of the ash and, and identify it like a fingerprint almost. So every single step of the way, he shows that the biblical story is supported by geological, historical and archaeological evidence that's been around forever that we all are aware of or scholars are all aware of but nobody's putting it together basically and you saw where he was standing in front of that museum at the beginning well he actually goes into the museum towards the end of the thing and he shows you uh, some gold jewelry that they've archaeologists have found and the gold jewelry is a uh, I guess you wouldn't call it a replica because it's very small. It's like maybe two inches high. But a, a representation of what the Ark of the Covenant looked like. And it fits the biblical description perfectly, including dimensions and everything. So I just thought this was something that I wanted to make my viewers aware of. You know, <clears throat> I understand some of you are uh, don't believe in God and are not interested in this kind of stuff. And that's fine. Uh, but for those of you who are, I, I highly recommend this thing. You need to plan carefully to sit down and watch it because it's a, a long, it's a long documentary. It's over an hour and a half long, but I think you will find it very rewarding when you do watch it. So <laughs> once again, I have to say, oops, sorry. I have to say thanks a lot, uh, that Canadian white trash guy, uh, for tipping me off to that. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed that a great deal, and I guarantee you I'll be looking at more of his stuff in the future. <clears throat> and for all of you, my viewers, I pray that you will be abundant, that you will live a long life, and that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you'll be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you'll make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out. <laughs>